All right, so our first exam is coming up, and I wanted to give a little exam review just to let you know what to expect. Uh, first of all, um, the exam is going to be, as usual, uh, fully calculation based. So the problems are going to look a lot like the homework or the practice problems. No multiple choice or true false or definitions or anything like that. They're regular problems where you have to calculate an answer. Uh, for a standard test, generally speaking, you can expect uh, between five to seven questions, depending on how long each question is. But on average, this is about what to expect for a normal test. Uh, any uh, constants or numbers like a specific heat or latent heat or things like that uh, will be on the test given to you. You don't have to memorize them or anything like that. So those will be on the test for you to use. Also the formulas, uh, there will be a formula sheet provided. It should be posted on Canvas as well. So uh, if you don't have the formula sheet, go on Canvas and uh, download it. Uh, it should contain all the formulas you will need for the whole semester. And so you just choose the equations which are necessary for these particular problems. Um, what topics will be on this test? Well, uh, all of thermodynamics. I decided to uh, complete this uh, major topic, thermodynamics, before giving our first test. That way all the questions are on the same basic underlying topic and we're not including other things like fluids or optics or stuff like that on this test. It's all about thermodynamics. And so it'll be nice to know what, uh, what have we gone over. Well, the first major topic in thermodynamics was calorimetry. And calorimetry, if you remember, was the type of problem where you're given multiple items all placed in a system. Uh, the items may be at different temperatures. You place them all together. You mix it all up. You wait a while and everything comes to some final equilibrium temperature. And generally speaking, you're asked what is the final temperature? Or uh, you have some hot coffee and you add some ice to the coffee to cool it down. How much ice should you add to get it down to 60 degrees or whatever? Those types of problems uh, are calorimetry problems and equations which relate to it or Q equals CM delta T and Q equals M times L depending on if you're changing temperature or you're changing phase. So, for instance, if you recall, adding ice to hot coffee, the hot coffee will cool down to some final temperature, and so there's CM delta T for him. For the ice, there's multiple pieces. You have CM delta T to cool down to zero. Then you have M times L for the ice to now melt. And now that it's melted, you'll have CM delta T for the melted ice to heat up to its final temperature. And so generally speaking, you have Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 and so on, depending on how many items are in your particular system. And you add them all up and you set it equal to zero. That's how you solve these types of problems. Next topic we discussed dealt with um, the methods of uh, heat transfer and the first one was conduction. And so here we had Q over T was K A delta T over L. So this was the type of problem where you may have uh, a window on one side of the window is 100 degrees, on the other side is 60 degrees, and you want to know how much heat 
is transferred per second, what's the heat transfer rate uh, through the window given its size and given its thickness. Or maybe you have a double layer system. So you'll have two things. You have T1 over here, T2 over here, and so in the middle there's some T3 and the heat is flowing through. And you want to know the heat transfer rate or how much energy is transferred in two hours or questions like that. Those were conduction style of questions. Then we had radiation. which also dealt with a heat transfer rate, but this was a heat transfer rate due to radiation. And this question, Q over T is sigma epsilon A T to the fourth. Or Q over T is sigma epsilon A T object to the fourth minus T environment to the fourth. And so we saw problems like this. You have a sphere that's heated to 5,000 degrees. The sphere has a certain radius, and you want to know how much energy is transferred per second. Or you have a star of a certain radius. It's at a certain temperature. How much heat energy does it transfer in two days? And questions like that. And then the last topic we went over was the ideal gas law. And here we had a few different uh, equations, PV equals nRT, PV equals nKT, and P1, V1 over T1, is P2, V2 over T2. And so for ideal gas law, we had questions like a gas is placed in a spherical chamber whose radius is whatever. You heat the gas to 300 degrees Celsius, and you know you have two moles of this gas. What is the pressure? Or another type of question may be you have a gas in this cylindrical ch uh, chamber that's at 50 degrees. Um, if you expand the chamber to a new radius, what's its new temperature? That's the second, uh, or the third equation over here. When you change one of the characteristics, how does another one change? The first two equations are more about the state of a gas. You place a gas in a certain state, tell me about one of its characteristics. And so these are all the topics we've gone over. We've had multiple practice problems, multiple example problems on all of these topics and the best way in my opinion to study for this particular test is first and foremost to go over the homework problems. We've had homework problems on all of these topics um, and they're graded so go ahead check them out make sure you can sit down with a blank sheet of paper and solve those problems out correctly. Once that's over with go to the practice problems Go over all of the practice problems and again see can you solve these problems without looking something up. If you're able to, then you're going to be perfect for this exam because the types of questions you can expect to see on this exam are of the same type as the practice problems. Nothing new. If you are having trouble, then the best bet is to go back to the videos especially the videos on example problems where I go and solve particular examples. See how I'm working them out, see how I'm explaining why I'm doing what I'm doing, and allow that to help you, help guide you in solving the particular problems you're having trouble with. With these things, you should be fine. If you still need some outside resources, don't be afraid to check the textbook for examples. Go on YouTube, look up these topics, uh, they're fairly standard topics. What I will say, especially when it comes to ideal gas law, is only worry about the stuff I've done in class. There's a lot of extra stuff surrounding the ideal gas law, which we did not get to, purely because of time's sake. And you're not responsible for those things. You're only responsible for the types of questions I've talked about. 
particularly using these three equations when it comes to the ideal gas law. And the same, of course, holds for these other uh, topics. I will not ask you questions on thermodynamics that we did not already go over in a video lecture or in the practice problems. So I can guarantee you if you work the practice problems and you do them faithfully and you truly do them yourself without copying, then you have no doubt of being able to make a hundred on this particular exam. So work hard on it. As it comes to how to take the exam, uh, the rules are fairly uh, limited. Uh, you're allowed to use your notes. You're allowed to use uh, whatever resources uh, you'd like. The only exemption, the only thing you're not allowed to use is outside help, other people. You can't text your friend. You can't go on Zoom. You can't work together to try to solve the problems and copy off of each other. Uh, you must solve these problems yourself. However, as I said, you could use your notes, you could use the problems that are posted on Canvas, you could use the videos to help guide you, but I don't want to see people with exactly the same answers, with exactly the same format, especially when those answers are wrong and they're wrong for the same reasons. That's cheating, and I don't allow cheating on these exams. I do allow you, because this is a take-home test, to use outside resources like books and notes and things like this. Um, for this exam, uh, it'll be posted in the morning. You'll have the whole day to work on it. And um, by midnight of that day, uh, it'll be due. And it's going to be formatted just like homework problems. You download the, the test paper, you work it out full, show your work and everything, box your answers, and then you submit it back online on Canvas through the submission button. Try to have it done earlier than the deadline mandates because if you have trouble, if there's some technical issue where it doesn't accept the submission, and a deadline passes, then you're late, and I don't want to see that. So try, if there is a technical issue, you'll have time to email me, let me know what's going on, and we can work something out. But anyway, that's everything you have to worry about for this particular exam. Uh, if you have any questions beforehand uh, on any of these topics, you're always welcome, as usual, to email me. Let me know what you're having trouble with. If I can do it by email, I'll be happy to send you answers to your questions or uh, check your work, make sure you're doing things correctly. If something more in-depth is necessary, then we could schedule a Zoom meeting to, uh, to see what's going on. But let me know. Other than that, I wish you luck with the studies, and until next time.